OLED will ruin you. I'll just give you a warning right now. It will ruin you. Once you sit down and start playing games on an OLED, nothing else is going to look as good. Thanks to Hookies for sponsoring this video. Now these are OEM Windows keys. That means that you do your own tech support. You're not going to be relying on Microsoft and they're generally locked to the hardware. We got a coupon code. Click on buy now. Put in coupon code TS25. Hit apply. And that price comes down to $17.19. Now when you compare that to the outrageous prices for Microsoft, you'd have to buy this many, many, many times to equal the price of one regular key from Microsoft. As of right now, this Windows 10 Pro key will unlock Windows 11. We also have Windows 10 Home. Windows 11, you can buy it directly. Windows 11 Home. And we have two flavors of Office. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here. Go to your user center. Click on My Purchase Orders. Just View Keys and Codes. Then you can just copy and paste your key. Hit Start. Type Activate. Click on Activation Settings. Paste it in there. Click on Next. And you will be activated. So head on over to hookies.com to get yourself an OEM Windows key at a price that makes sense. We got a Pixio to look at and this one's special because it's OLED. And it's like the most inexpensive OLED I've ever seen with the amount of features that it has at this size and at this resolution. So you're looking at the PX277 OLED Max. They call it the wonder of OLED. This thing is uh, responsible for getting me hooked on Dragon's Dogma 2. <laughs> we'll talk about that in just a second. I want to get through the specs first because there's something special going on here just because it's OLED but also the price and what you're getting. So this is a flat 1440p monitor, no curvature, and 1440p is the perfect resolution at 27 inches in my opinion. You don't want 4K at this resolution because you're going to have to turn on resolution scaling. Everything's going to be really small if you don't. And then it's kind of defeating the purpose. And when you're sitting back a certain distance from the monitor, it's going to look the same because your eyes are not going to be able to see the pixels that are that small unless you're sitting really close like two feet away then maybe you can benefit from 4k at 32 inches or 27 inches but for me 27 inches even 32 inches 1440p is perfect and it's easier for your gpu to drive so you're going to get a better frame rate which is going to be nice because this is a 240 hertz panel 240 hertz is nice but the response time is 0 0.03 milliseconds i've had an OLED before. I had a 40 something, 48 inch TV and I played some games on that and it looked awesome. It was 100 and I think 144 hertz. Yeah, it was cool, but I didn't do a couple of these tests that I did in this video. And oh, we'll get to that in just a minute. Let me keep going through these specs. So there's all kinds of specs. There's all kinds of information, but I want to talk about what it's like to game on this monitor. So let's finish going through these specs here so we can get the, all that out there. Aspect ratio 16 by 9. Contrast ratio is 1.5 million to 1 because it's no lead. I'll just put this on the screen right here so you can see the brightness because our brightness level is going to vary. And right now you can see it's capture. I'm doing HDR, so it's capturing it. It's like kind of gray. Well, whatever. As you can see, 200, 400, and 1,000 we're talking about with HDR. And this actually has a very usable, beautiful HDR implementation because it's HDR10. And then as you can see here, 1.07 billion colors, and here's all the different gamuts. 137.3% of the sRGB gamut, 98.8% of the DCI-P3 gamut, 97.2% of the NTSC gamut, and 964 of the ARGB gamut. So this is what I would say, God gamut. All right, for our ports, we have two HDMI 2.0, one DisplayPort 1.4 and then one USB Type-C 3.1. Then you also see we have two USB right there. Now this will actually work as a KVM. So if you have multiple computers, you can hook it up. Um, it's not like a full KVM imp implementation, but I mean, that's pretty cool having one monitor and being able to switch back and forth. Also, you can very easily switch between the sources. There's a little joystick on the back that allows you to switch the sources, change the profiles, and do a few other things with just a touch of the button on the back. So if you want to plug up one of your consoles to the HDMI uh, or whatever, you can have multiple consoles plugged up and just quickly switch between your computer and your consoles and play the games however you like on your OLED. Now, the power brick on this is powerful. OLEDs are going to require more power than an IPS, but we also have a little bit of extra headroom right here. The USB-C that's on the back here, you can plug that up. It supports 65 watt type C charging, which is enough to power a Steam Deck. It's also enough to power up a lot of the little mini PCs I've been looking at. A lot of those only use a 65 watt plug, some of them more. But if, you know, the, the lower power ones that are 65 watt, you could like just plug them up and go like a little emulator box or something. Just plug it up 65 watts and it powers itself. And you'll also be able to get the display through there. And they, well, I didn't even notice they showed this. It does have a Steam Deck right there showing, hey, look at that, huh, your laptop. Why, is, why do they talk like that? Yes. Next up, we do have adaptive sync on this. So we'll have that as well. If you want to do the adaptive refresh rate, match it up with your monitor. 
by all means. There's speakers, I don't think anyone's gonna use them. Please tell me somebody in the comments if you're going to use the speakers. I don't know anyone who will use the speakers. Maybe, you know, it does have a headphone port in the bottom as well, I almost forgot to mention. Maybe you'll use that, but I don't know why you'd use the two five watt speakers. All right, with the stand, the dimensions are 28 point. The dimensions with the stand are 23.8 by 20.95 by 7.87 inches. And without the stand, just the panel at 23.8 by 13.8 by 1.78. The thickness is in the center of the back. It's not thick everywhere, but it does have some thickness for cooling and everything else. And we have a nice big metal back plate on the back with a beautiful 100 by 100 millimeter visa mount. Why do I call it beautiful? What's so beautiful about a visa mount? Well, this one just snaps into place. That's why it's beautiful. It's like a lot of the super high end monitors have have this feature which brings me to the stand we have a metal stand with a plate on the bottom and it's substantial and everything just clips into place there's a cable routing hole in the bottom and then we do have some adjustments here the height adjustment is 0 to 110 millimeters all right this will tilt 5 to 15 degrees swivels 30 degrees and it'll pivot 90 degrees I don't know why anybody would do that, but you can if you want to with this monitor stand. So it's one of the better monitor stands I've seen, and that includes monitors of any price range, even the more expensive ones. It's really awesome and substantial, and the fact that we have a nice flat surface there, I'm able to put stuff on that, and it doesn't wobble around or anything. I like this better than having individual legs, so we can actually use this space. It becomes usable desk space. All right, the product weighs 6.8 kilograms. 14.99 pounds. And we also have two 5 watt speakers. I don't know why we have 5 watt speakers. They sound like 5 watt speakers that would be in a monitor. They're monitors. No one's going to use that, are they? Like I always say that maybe it's good if you're using this in an office. Why would you use this in an office? Which brings me to the next thing, the use case for this monitor. Gaming, HDR content and watching stuff. That's my biggest use case. How's the text rendering? People have told me that, you know, like on OLEDs, the text is gonna be, I can't tell much difference between this and an IPS panel. Looks about the same to me. So I've had to do a few different things. As you can see here on the bottom, I've now got my, my start bar popping up instead of just always being there because OLEDs, do get burn-in. And there's all kinds of technologies implemented to help to prevent the burn-in, like different pixel shift technologies. If you ever have a full-on white screen, let's just see if we can, uh, let's bring this up. This is a white screen test. It's making me like blown out. When you get full screen, it becomes gray. Look at that, it's like white right there. And now it's gray, it's hard to tell, but yeah, it changes from white to gray. And that's something that's done to make sure that the pixels are not fully bright because that's not good for them. It's totally different technology. Doesn't work the way IPS does, doesn't work the way Twisted Pneumatic does, doesn't work the way CRTs uh, do. But whenever you have things that have static content, static borders, like this has got a static border, if this is always up here on the top, um, you know, these things, you're at risk at burning them in, even though this is a darker color and everything. Um, yeah. And then while you're using your monitor, every, well, right now it's on like a timer for every four hours, it's going to pop up and be like, hey, we, we need to do some like monitor longevity stuff. I forget what it says on the screen, but you know, it's, it's got all these technologies built in. So that's something to take consideration of. If you're, if you're playing games, that's usually dynamic content. And most games will allow you to get rid of the HUD. If they don't, game uh, developers, please give us a toggle for HUDs. Just for people who use OLED monitors and people like me who also, even when you're not using an OLED monitor, like to have a nice clean view of the game and toggling the HUD's the way to go. If you have something like that, that's great. And then if you're watching movies, of course, that's also going to be fine. Now you get pure, true black with an OLED. So it looks like, you know, it looks better than an AHVA, even though that gets really, really nice black. Um, and it looks a lot better than an IPS because an IPS has to be brighter. And so it's difficult to achieve those you know, nice blacks. IPS has better color. VA panels have better blacks and sometimes can be a little faster, not, not so much anymore. But OLED is the best of both worlds and is way faster. Let's talk about that 0 0.03 second, uh, millisecond gray to gray response time for just a minute because I was kind of in shock at the results I got. Now, what I did to test this, because this is a 240 hertz panel, I loaded up Dusk. I also want to mention that we have these officially licensed Dusk t-shirts that are awesome over on epicpants.com. And, uh, you know, I don't sell very many of those because I never mentioned them. So now I'm mentioning them, so you need to go get them now. That's an order for you to place an order. Anyway, and then we get into dusk and we start moving around. And I set my camera up to take pictures at 1 250th of a second. So anytime it snaps a picture, it's going to get an entire frame. It's not going to blend through. You know, you want to make sure your camera is faster than the actual monitor so that you can just snap and see 
one frame of what's there. With this monitor, every time I snapped it, there's like no ghosting. You know, normally with like an IPS or an AHVA panel, which is the VA panels are much worse when it comes to this, the time it takes for the stuff to fade in and fade out when things are moving, the difference is, is clear. So what you're seeing here, these are pictures that are taken just one frame and there's almost no ghosting. I was able to get some ghosting on this though. And in order to do that, I had to take my mouse and literally move like this to make my character just spin in all directions and then take pictures while I'm just like spinning. I try, I had to spin faster than the monitor could keep up with. Now, just doing some normal motion on a VA panel, just to show you the difference. Take a look at this picture here from Dusk. I like to use Dusk because it's like, you know, the, the really rough edges, you can see the, you know, the edges of things. So that way, when you see ghosting, it's very apparent. So when I'm just doing basic turns right here, you can see that jackass hooded thing up there on top it's got there's like five or six of them because that's how bad the ghosting is with a va panel this is night and day this is like using almost like using a crt i won't say i don't want to say it's like using a crt a crt still looks in my opinion slightly better for full-on like motion and everything which reminds me if you want to play all of your old retro games well you know what you've got some awesome crt effects that you can apply in old emulators and you know like retro arch and stuff and there's even you know like if you can even go and get oled presets and those look awesome on this screen and we're finally able to play something on a flat panel that feels about like a CRT because the motion is so good. The only way to make the motion really, really good is to do black frame insertion and it just kind of darkens the image a little bit when you do stuff like that. I don't think OLED is going to be there for another few years, but it's getting there. It's, it's you know, really is getting there. In other games, so I played a lot, I've mentioned of Dragon's Dogma on this and that kind of, I mean, kind of like, I had to take a day off to play that game because I was getting into it and like trying to figure out how it works and everything and started modding and modding and stuff. Oh, by the way, I want to say thanks to Green Man Gaming for sending over a copy of Dragon's Dogma 2. It's 14% off if you go there. So don't get it on Steam. And just note like all that junk that you see on Steam, there's like all this DLC nonsense. A lot of it's like they make you pay a few dollars to change your character appearance. You could just get a mod for that and it's free. There's literally already a mod on the Nexus that allows you to get, the, you have to get a book in the game to change your appearance. There's just a mod that lets you get the book for, you know, like just go buy it in the game for, for cheap without spending real world money. Anyway, forget all that stuff. You can just get the regular version of that 14% off over at Green Man Gaming. I'll put that link in the description. Thanks to them for sending it over and getting me hooked on this damn game. But yeah, this game looks beautiful. For instance, right here, look at the stained glass floor. And I'm trying to record this and it's going to be difficult for you to see, depending on how your monitor is. You know, I'm trying to catch with my fancy little camera here, I'm trying to catch this as good as I can. But my camera only does 30 FPS at 4K and I wanted to shoot at 4K. It doesn't do like the 240, you know, hertz. So you're not going to be able to see the fluidity of motion, the fluidity of motion that I'm seeing right here. You're not going to be able to see that. All I can tell you is that it looks ridiculously good. So OLED will ruin you. I'll just give you a warning right now. It will ruin you. Once you sit down and start playing games on an OLED, nothing else is going to look as good. It looks so much better than anything we have available. But the caveats are, you know, you have to make sure you're running the screen care. And that can get annoying if you're in the middle of the game. It pops up and it's like, oh, you've been playing for four hours. You should run some screen care. You should do something uh, you could set it to you know run whenever you're turning off the monitor or, or whatever um, but the thing that bothers me is that the joystick is behind the monitor and if you're leaning back you know like playing some emulators or something get up and go over here and press the button on the back to make sure that the automatic you know screen thing's not going to come on and do stuff the screensaver is not going to come on so that can get a little bit annoying and then i don't know how long it's going to be until there's burn in i've heard that it takes you know thousands of hours but how often are you on your computer? I don't know. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen when it comes to OLED burn-in. It'll probably take several years. And then you might start to see some like outlines of things, depending on what you're doing. You might start seeing, you know, your web browser if you're using it all day for that. You know, like would I put an OLED on my main desk just yet? I don't know. You know, I think they look so much better. I've got a really nice IPS. And my main desk also has a CRT. Like I've got IPS in the middle and I've got it set up so that if I turn to the side, I have a CRT sitting there. And then I, you know, it's four by three, so it's not 16 by nine, but I do think the CRT looks about as good and it doesn't have any burn in, it's working great. And I only use it for games. 
So, and I even used it for modern games because it's so beautiful. Is it, it looks very similar. Like the quality between the two is very similar. For most of you all out there who aren't CRT nerds like me, you get this, this is like the best thing you've ever seen. You know, how long are you gonna have it? Years and years before you see any burn in likely. I have a good warranty. You can come over here and take a look at it. Now, they do have a, a, a built-in feature that allows you to see how long the monitor has been on. So they can see if it's, been, you know, if you've had it for a month and you're running it all the way, all if you're leaving it on at night and stuff, they'll know that. Be like, well, you bought this last month and it's been on 24 seven, you know, like, of course you gotta sleep this thing when you're not there and, and, and minimize it and run a screensaver. So you're gonna have to get used to screensavers again. Are these things that you're willing to put up with to have the best monitor, like the best looking display in the 27 inch range? Maybe, you know, if you're, like I said, if your primary thing is gaming and media consumption, there it is, you got it. 27 inch, 1440p, beautiful. If you are not doing those things most of the time and only doing those things some of the time, maybe not. But this is a decision you'll have to make. And you know, right now it's a bit easier because OLED at this price range is kind of ridiculous. And you know, I I don't know how Pixio does it because Pixio is not what I would consider to be a budget brand. They're one of my favorite monitor manufacturers but they always come out with stuff that's like in a better price point than most of the competitors. And it's usually because they've, you know, made a monitor without any extra frills and extra bells and whistles and stuff that you really don't use in the first place. But this one has a lot of stuff, you know, it's got all kinds of features. Uh, I think the software may be like early version, maybe that'll be updated soon. And there's all kinds of features you can go and turn on in there, including the low latency modes and gaming modes, and you can put the reticles on the screen and have the FPS counter on the screen. You can do all that kind of stuff with the software that's already there. Um, but I say it's early mode because I think it would be nice to have a little bit more information because when you're running HDR, you don't have access to the contrast and stuff. So you have to get used to that. If you're running a, if you're running the monitor in gamer mode, you don't have access to the color and the contrast adjustments. So just I turn off gamer mode and you can go back on and granularly turn up and down everything um, that you want to. Also, almost everything that you've seen on the screen I'm running this monitor at 60% brightness and it feels brighter than my other monitors. I've got an IPS monitor in this room uh, and an old twisted, no, 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 that's, this is an IPS as well. So yeah, I got two IPS monitors in this room, two budget IPS monitors, Acer and Adele, that are just like my side monitors. Each one was like a hundred bucks, <laughs> they're cheap, uh, but they had side monitors, whatever. It's good. Just put web browser and stuff on there. Difference between those monitors is night and day. The middle monitor, this Pixio right here, it feels brighter, even though I'm only running it at 60%. So that's kind of like, what is going on here, everybody? That's crazy. So do I recommend it? Of course I do. If you're willing to, you know, hide your taskbar, get rid of some of your static icons and use the screen care. It's awesome. Play your new games, play your old games with a response time like that's bordering on CRT. So let me know what you think of the PX277 OLED Max from Pixio. Tell me in the comments, do you want one? Are you gonna get one? Let me know, I'm curious. If you've already got one, because they've been out for a few days now and it's come in, what do you think? What do you think of those colors? <laughs> it's kind of hard to believe that it's a flat monitor producing colors like that. Anyway, I'll see you in the comments. Mm -hmm.